Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. President of the Supreme Council of Health and the head of the National Task Force to combat the coronavirus, Lieutenant General Dr Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa paid an inspection visit to the intensive care unit at the field hospital in Citra in the presence of the Royal Medical Service Commandant, Major General Professor Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. The SCH President was briefed about the medical readiness within the framework of the efforts made to combat coronavirus. He stressed Bahrain's ongoing implementation of its strategic preemptive plans to handle COVID-19 outbreak, noting the continuous provision of all medical and infrastructure resources to boost capability of the health sector in exceptional circumstances undergone by the world. He praised the cooperation between all parties to curb the spread of the virus, stressing the efforts led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The SCH president asserted that protecting the health and safety of all requires boosting precautionary measures in line with the directors of the Coordination Committee chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The Royal Medical Services Commandant stressed that the ICU is part of the continuous efforts to provide health services for citizens and residents according to the best medical standards which will contribute to fighting COVID-19. He added that the unit was equipped to part of the task force preparations to provide intensive care for serious cases. He pointed out that a comprehensive system of ICUs across Bahrain aimed to cope with any potential future developments. Major General Professor Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa noted that the ICU was set up on an area of 2,400 square metres and was equipped in a record time of 14 days. He added that the unit has a capacity of 152 beds, outfitted with 152 ventilators. It will be run by a specialised medical team of 55 doctors and 250 nurses. He pointed out that the unit has a state-of-the-art medical lab, which is considered a precedent in a field hospital. The Royal Medical Services Commandant affirmed that the preemptive measures being taken are part of the plans which are continuously updated, according to the developments related to the virus. He stressed that the well-studied steps have brought about success in handling the virus. He thanked the first defence line, the medical and nursing crews, who are working around the clock to carry out the plans competently. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziyani, participated through video conference in the extraordinary session of the Council of the Arab League at the ministerial level, hosted by Oman. The meeting was held at the request of Palestine to discuss the steps and procedures the Arab countries could take to counter the Israeli plan to annex the West Bank or parts of it to the Israeli entity. In the speech of the Bahrain, which was distributed during the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed the Kingdom's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause. He said that the Israeli plan is a fragrant violation of the relevant UN resolutions and principles of the international law and all the previous agreements signed between the Palestinian brothers and Israel. Dr Al Ziani explained that this is really planned threatens international peace and security and endangers the region. He added that a comprehensive, just and lasting peace in the Middle East region can only be achieved with the complete withdrawal of Israel from the Arab lands occupied in 1967, establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, return of all Palestinian refugees to their lands and the implementation of all relevant UN resolutions. He stressed the importance of the Arab Peace Initiative of 2002, which calls for the complete withdrawal of Israel from the Palestinian territories, particularly East Jerusalem, and the rest of the occupied Arab territories. The minister also condemned Israeli measures as hindering the efforts to combat coronavirus, including Israel's insistence to keep Palestinians in prisons. He stressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's support of the measures taken by the Palestinian government to combat the pandemic and expressed its full preparedness to assist the Palestinians in this regard. The Council affirmed that the Arab states would support all political, diplomatic, legal and financial means and any decisions or steps taken by Palestine to confront the Israeli plans in its commitment of the annexation and a colonial settlement expansion crime. The Council called an international quartet to convene an urgent meeting to see if the chances of peace and a two-state solution and to take an international position consistent with the international resolutions in the terms of reference of the peace process. Bahrain will join the international community in observing the International Workers' Day, marked worldwide on May the 1st, being an opportunity to highlight workers' achievements and contributions to the nation building and development, as well to affirm the pivotal role in the three production parties. 
Labour and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Al Hamidan expressed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's great appreciation of workers and constant keenness to take care of them under all circumstances and on various occasions citing the royal patronage of the annual celebrations held by the General Federation of Bahrain Trade Unions, the GFBTU, and the Bahrain Free Trade Union Federation, al Hur, marking World Labour Day, in addition to honouring outstanding employees. The Minister stressed the keenness of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, to provide all kinds of support to them, preserve their rights and ensure their professional stability, citing the Cabinet's praise of the workers' achievements and role in the Kingdom's development march. Hamidan also highlighted the unwavering support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to workers, which he said is reflected in his keenness to give priority to developing the labour market to ensure providing quality job opportunities for citizens. Hamidan stressed that workers play a major role in facing the exceptional challenge resulting from the novel coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19. He said that the Kingdom has taken unprecedented measures to fight COVID-19 and launched distinguished initiatives to protect expatriates, including the provision of a secure and safe work environment and protecting the workers' rights without distinction. Information Minister Ali bin Mohammed al Mehi paid a visit to the Heritage Village in Ras Hayan, where he met with the officials in charge of the popular quiz programme, Asaria. The TV quiz show is broadcast daily during the holy month of Ramadan and will continue to the third day of Eid al-Fitr. The programme is officially sponsored by Bahrain telecommunication company Batelco in partnership between the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, a popular heritage sports committee and the Ministry of Information Affairs. The Minister lauded the support of the media and communication sector receives from the representative of His Majesty the King for charity work in youth affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, the SCYS, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Information Minister got updated on the daily preparations at the Heritage Village to shoot the programme, which is broadcast live on TV. He visited Al Arish region at the Heritage Village and the shooting venue and talked with the programme's crew. The Minister also visited the Conscious Society team in conjunction with the coverage of the programme by the conclusion of Fina Herb campaign launched by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, appreciating the efforts exerted by the work team and the success of the targeted programme. Aramehi noted that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's praise of the show is a good indication of the positive impact that this Conscious Society programme is achieving for various segments of society. The Minister also underscored the efforts exerted by the National Task Force, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which garnered international praise. The Minister of Interna Information Affairs also paid a visit to the Radio Department, the News Department and the Bahrain News Agency, where he met the employees, congratulated them on the occasion of the month of Ramadan and praised the efforts and high efficiency. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has recorded 1,351 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number to 22,753 so far, of which 19,428 are active cases. The Health Ministry said 123 are in critical care. Around 17% of the cases were Saudi nationals and 83% were expats. The Health Ministry spokesman announced 210 new recovered cases on Thursday, taking the total number of recoveries to 3,163, while five new deaths were being reported, raising the total to 162. The latest losses were of two Saudis and three expats, with deaths reported in Riyadh and Jeddah. A little over 50% of all confirmed cases of the Kingdom were between the ages of 20 to 40. The United Arab Emirates has detected 557 new coronavirus cases after conducting 26,000 tests, according to the Government Communication Office. The death toll climbed to 111 after the Health Ministry recorded six new deaths over the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, an additional 114 have recovered, bringing the total recoveries to 2,543 out of a total of 13,038 cases so far. Less than 1% of those who contracted the virus in the UAE have passed away, while nearly 20% of the country's coronavirus patients have recovered so far. The UAE has partially lifted strict lockdowns in recent days, 
with the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Malls, restaurants and other businesses are not allowed to operate but must follow strict preventative measures. Oman has confirmed 99 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours, taking the total to 2,447. The health ministry announced today that a total of 495 have so far recovered and the death toll remains relatively low at 11. Earlier this week, Oman eased some restrictions imposed to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Authorities ended control checkpoints earlier set up to restrict movement among Oman's provinces. Some businesses were also allowed to reopen. Iran today announced 63 new deaths from the novel coronavirus, saying the rate of fatalities and infections were dropping, while calling on the public to remain vigilant. The deaths recorded in the past 24 hours brought to 6,091 the overall toll from the illness in the Middle East's hardest hit country. The health ministry spokesman said 1,006 people tested positive for the virus that causes COVID-19. New infections brought to 95,646, the number recorded in the Islamic Republic since it announced the first cases in mid-February. More than 76,300 of those have already been released from hospital after recovering. Of those still being treated, 2,899 are in a critical condition. The number of people who have died from COVID-19 in Turkey has risen by 93 in the last 24 hours to 3,174 with 2,615 new cases of the virus. The total number of cases rose to 120,204. According to health data, the highest total outside Western Europe are the United States. A total of 48,886 people have so far recovered from the new coronavirus, which causes the respiratory disease at COVID-19. The number of tests conducted in the past 24 hours stood at 42,004, raising the total number of tests since the beginning of the outbreak to over 1 million. Spain's coronavirus death toll rose to 24,824 today, as 281 more people died from causes related to the disease overnight. The number of new coronavirus cases diagnosed in the country rose to a total of 215,216, from 213,435 the day before. The country has suffered the third highest number of deaths in the world from the pandemic after the United States and Italy. Spanish health officials believe the epidemic peaked on April the 2nd when 950 people died over 24 hours, nearly three weeks after the government imposed a strict lockdown, effectively confining almost 47 million citizens to home to slow the spread of the virus. Russia today reported 7,933 new cases of the coronavirus, a record daily rise, bringing its nationwide tally to 114,431. The official nationwide death toll rose to 1,169 after 98 people with the virus died in the last 24 hours, according to Russia's Coronavirus Crisis Response Centre. The number of cases is likely to be much higher as not everyone gets tested and tests in Russia reported to be only 70-80% to accurate. The World Health Organization, meanwhile, said it hoped China would invite it to take part in its investigations into the animal origins of the novel coronavirus. The WHO said the organization would be keen to work with international partners and at the invitation of the Chinese government to participate in investigations around the animal origins. He said the UN Health Agency understood there were a number of investigations underway in China to better understand the source of the outbreak, but added that the WHO is not currently involved in studies in China. Scientists believe the killer virus jumped from animals to humans, emerging in China late last year, possibly from a market in Wuhan selling exotic animals for meat. Ten Egyptian army personnel, including an officer, were killed or wounded when a bomb exploded in an armoured vehicle south of Bir Abd city in northern Sinai region. Military spokesman did not specify how many had been killed in the attack, which was not immediately claimed by any group. Militants loyal to Daesh are active in the strategic border region. Egypt has been fighting insurgents who have killed hundreds of police and soldiers in the northern part of the Sinai Peninsula since the ousting of the Muslim Brotherhood in 2013, following mass protests against its rule. Militants have also carried out attacks elsewhere in the country. 
Iran has slammed Germany's ban on the activities of Lebanon's Hezbollah movement on its soil, saying it would face consequences for its decision to give in to Israel and US pressure. The Islamic Republic claims the move was based slowly on the goals of propaganda machine of Israel and America. Iran also claimed that Hezbollah had a key role in fighting Daesh terrorism in the region. Germany branded Hezbollah a terrorist organisation yesterday, with dozens of police and special forces storming mosques and associations across the country linked to the militant group. Libya's eastern based forces said it will implement a ceasefire for Ramadan, adding that the temporary truce came at the request of the international community and friendly countries. Libyan National Army, the LNA spokesman, confirmed that both the LNA and the Tripoli-based Government of National Accord, the GNA, have already said twice this year that they would stop fighting, but there was a sharp escalation in warfare last month. Libya has been split since 2014 between the GNA and Tripoli and some other areas of the northwest and a parallel administration based in Benghazi in the east. Danish tire maker Lego has switched some of its factory production to making protective visors rather than plastic bricks. They're being supplied free of charge for local health workers battling the coronavirus pandemic. Lego's factory in Berlin, Denmark, usually churns out thousands of toy bricks a day, but now some of the capacity is being used for a different task, helping battle COVID-19. Lego's chief operating officer, Carlsen Rasmussen, says some of their engineers originally suggested the idea. It took just hours for them to give it the green light. Now, protective visors are flowing from some of the factory's moulding machines. They have a capacity to produce more than 13,000 a day. About 75,000 have so far been made. Rasmussen says they've expanded visor production in the factory in Hungary, which is now supplying the country's health system.